was good. It's Mac B Dog, OTX, Shoreline Mafia. I'm taking off. Shoreline Mafia, Los Angeles, California, active since 2016, featuring Phoenix, Rob Vicious, Kato, and OGZ. All creatives want their own way. Four different people, that's four different visions. The words of OGZ when speaking on why, in his perspective, Shoreline Mafia disbanded. Today's feature was a group that really caught a wave in the peak of the streaming popularity and social media era, specifically SoundCloud, MySpace, Instagram, etc. In the late 2010s, Shoreline Mafia flooded LA with their version of New Age West Coast rap, quite different from the Kendrick Lamars, TDE, and Nipsey Hussles at the time. Heavily influenced by Bay Area sound and culture, as well as Southern and East Coast acts like 3-6 Mafia, of course, Lil Jon and Crunk Music, Max B and more. From the mid to late 2010s, I would say Shoreline Mafia and groups like SOB, RBE were the faces of what the youth in hip-hop and urban culture were all across America at the time. Reckless, anti-everything, heavily brand-inspired, and of course, drugged out off everything from pills to weed to sipping lean. A time I like to call the GTA era, which we, as far as the urban hip-hop-inspired community, still live in today. In music, Shoreline represented the evolution of the turn-up wave popular in the early 2010s. By the end of the decade, it went from being ultra-energetic and doing drugs to help bring that energy to kids being full-blown drug addicts while coating it with a layer of cool because their favorite rappers were doing it too. Whatever it took to not feel reality, the kids were trying while a group like Shoreline Mafia played in the background. The upbeat but dragged out Bay Area sound was becoming popular again in the 2010s through groups like Shoreline, SOBRBE, and a wave of Detroit music infiltrating the industry as well. Shoreline signed to Atlantic Records in 2018 and released new versions of some of their songs, Musty and Bands, songs they did years before being picked up by the label. Their debut album wouldn't release for two years in 2020, following founding member Phoenix taking to Twitter to announce he was leaving the group after their album released in a few months to focus on his solo career. Hours later, his close friend and close Shoreline affiliate, Mac P, was shot and killed. Make matters worse, the pandemic also hit and forced mass quarantine, which helped in solidifying to fans that Shoreline was indeed never to be the same. Their fan base was described as cult-like at their peak from 2017 through 2020, but for these reasons, they weren't able to stand the test of time. Salute to international underscore JN for this request. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Shoreline Mafia was a rap group from LA that came together organically through passions like music, graffiti, and streetwear fashion. Phoenix Flexin and OGZ formed a relationship through graffiti and tagging meetups in LA, and after Phoenix discovered Jeezy was doing music, he decided to get into it and the two began making music together. They formed the group Shoreline Mafia, just thinking of names and the idea of where waves begin and settled on Shoreline. The Mafia part strictly inspired by 3-6. Later, they added OGZ's friend Kato from Chicago and Phoenix's friend Rob Vicious. OGZ and Phoenix being the main MCs. They and producer Ron Ron were bringing their sound and new age LA rap culture to the forefront late 2010s before it all stopped for these reasons. Stunt number one, Atlantic Records. The problem I would call it with new age music and the social media internet era is the ball of energy it quickly stores up behind artists then how fast it's consumed and released by the public for the next wave. Music fans in this era can easily access what's next, enjoy it for the time being and move on to be first to find what's new. 
This created a window for new artists of about three years until they're considered yesterday's news, replaced by something younger and more current. Labels played a part in this quick transition, focusing on the influence new artists bring to the table, exploiting it to make as much as possible, then moving on. Different from the strategies of yesteryears where artists were developed and allowed to grow their fan base and create brand loyalty that could last generations, by the late 2010s labels let go of these strategies and focused on signing whoever had the most notoriety or clout on social media and made them seem like the next wave of rapper or rap group to profit more off streaming instead of official albums viewed as back-end investments. One label prolific at this was Atlantic Records. Atlantic has always been accused of not focusing on the art of the music and artist's perspective and more on profiting off whatever's hot for the moment by artists like Lupe Fiasco, Uzi, Waka Flocka, Action Bronson, and most recently Meek Mill and Kodak Black. It became a problem for Shoreline because Atlantic always had intentions of using their new age strategy on the group, hoping to take advantage of their inevitable short-lived wave and not focus on their long-term success or them continuing to make music together. So their album was pushed back and not released until summer 2020 when their buzz was just about settled and in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. The album still made the top 30 on Billboard Top 200 and sold well at over 250k, racking up billions of streams. Good but not as expected, seeing Shoreline's influence and output usually making songs that wouldn't be released for years through the label. Stunt number 2. Fans Wanting Ojeezy Added to Atlantic dropping the ball on developing Shoreline to the point they could last for years before breaking up, the fans who have always identified Shoreline Mafia with Ojeezy began to want him as a solo artist, giving that idea more attention than the group itself. Ojeezy had more of what that generation saw in themselves or aspired to be. His look was very distinct, taking from a young Easy e and adding his own new age flavor to it, along with he had more of a rapper's personality per se than Phoenix, who was always more cool and laid back. More than skill or talent, OGZ had that marketable effect in that he wasn't what you'd normally expect to see from a rapper, benefiting as a 6ix9ine did, although I hate to compare the two, from being Mexican rappers using black slang mixed with their unusual look. From the beginning, it was always an air of the fans gravitating more to Jeezy individually, and this may have created negative tones within the group, although they have always claimed it was simply creative differences why they broke up. OGZ did go solo, releasing his debut album Jeezy World in 2021 on Atlantic, obviously not long after the group parted ways, in effort to capitalize off the wave Shoreline Mafia had earlier. The album wasn't received well by most fans and didn't springboard Jeezy into solo success like many thought. In my opinion, it just took too long to happen, and a pandemic happening at the same time disrupted everyone attempting to start something new. Jeezy also became a father in 2019, to which he says completely changed him, and it was evident in the music that no longer seemed to make sense. Stunt number three, time expired. Lastly, time just expired on Shoreline Mafia. Like mentioned earlier, the new age experiment in hip-hop in the 2010s created many small waves and one was the SoundCloud rapper. Rappers popular around this time all had a window of opportunity to either become something lasting or fizzle out into one-hit wonders or a thing that was for the time being. Like Famous Dex, Lil Pump, Made in Tokyo, SOBRBE, and Shoreline Mafia. The Kodaks, 21 Savage, Uzi, and even Lil Yachty's of the era managed to squeeze by further, whether by chance, building the right relationships, or actual talent, but for Shoreline, who weren't exactly the best rappers, their time was up and their repetitive sound and subject matters were lost in time. 
Not to mention by 2020, two years after they signed their deal with Atlantic, they already had creative differences and were ready to move on from the group. Rob Vicious and Kato basically vanished while Phoenix is developing his solo career and OGZ is enjoying being a parent and developing his as well. All in all, Shoreline Mafia was always going to have a short-lived career. Sounds and music never last the test of time. Real talent does, real effort and delicate management. Shoreline, I wouldn't call traditional talented rappers, but they were passionate about music and urban culture like graffiti and fashion, and those along with their youthful energy and relatability to their age groups gave them success for the time being. But as those fans aged, the group had to as well, and now their sound wasn't as well received as just young people doing young things. Being in their late 20s, early 30s, and parents now detached them from the wave and things dried up. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, their growth was stunted. Chipboy JC Stunted Growth Music, and I'm out.